uh, welcome you to the next class on inorganic chemistry of life uh, principles and perspectives. Uh, just immediately previous class we were looking at uh, the nitrogenous uh, molybdenum containing enzymes of which we have entered to the nitrogenous arena. So, as I said that nitrogenase has got two major components in the form in its enzyme. One is called the iron protein and the other part is called the molybdenum iron protein. And this iron protein uh, has uh, again components in it an iron sulfur cluster and a molybdenum ATP as well as molybdenum ADP, ADP bound uh, system these are the very important essential components. Now, this is essentially an iron protein is essentially a dimer which is called the gamma 2 having about 60 kilodalton molecular weight. So, what is the role of this? The role of this is the functioning is to bring electron electron transfer and it uses from a reduced ferridoxin or flavonoid and then to the molybdenum iron protein that is the role. And this does not happen just like that there is energy involved as I mentioned earlier and that goes by the energy uh, hydrolysis of ATP. That is where we are talking about the, the magnesium ATP the phosphorylation basically dephosphorylation phosphorylation dephosphorylation or in other words hydrolysis of ATP will bring a change in its conformation such that the iron protein will come in good contact with the iron molybdenum protein or molybdenum iron protein such that the electron transfer takes place effectively from iron sulfur cluster present in iron protein to a different kind of an iron sulfur cluster present in molybdenum iron protein that I will explain just in a while in the next slide itself. So, so this particular thing is nothing but the top portion of this enzyme as I mentioned. So, let us look at uh, the, the um, other part the molybdenum nitrogen molybdenum uh, iron protein. Molybdenum iron protein is a, a tetramer the is basically a hetero uh, dimer of uh, alpha dimer of beta alpha to beta 2. So, which is around 240. So, now if you combine the total molecular weight of 240 plus 60 in the previous case that is the iron protein totally the molecular weight of this nitrogenase enzyme which is a complex enzyme is around 300 kilodaltons. So, very huge protein. So, that means more than 3000 amino acids etcetera etcetera. Okay, uh, so, this uh, uh, contains uh, the iron sulfur cluster which is shown here and it is named as P cluster. So, in this P cluster what you have is the Fe4S3 another Fe4S3. So, the two Fe4S3s are fused through one sulfur. So, therefore, the, the whole thing is Fe4S3 plus Fe4S3 plus 1 S that will be Fe8S7 Fe4S3 Fe4S3 and then sulfide in between. This is uh, whole thing is called the P cluster. Besides this you have another unit which is a catalytic unit this is only electron transfer. So, this P cluster takes the electron from the iron sulfur cluster present in the iron protein uh, due to the hydrolysis of the ATP that brings a conformational change and transfers. So, that means this uh, Mg ATP um, and the iron sulfur cluster or at the at the at the juncture of the iron sulfur protein with that of the molybdenum iron sulfur protein. As I said that the, the second component present in this particular alpha 2 beta 2 uh, power is uh, a, a cofactor called the molybdenum uh, iron molybdenum cofactor iron molybdenum cofactor. So, this is basically uh, you have an iron 3 uh, S iron 4 S 3 and molybdenum uh, Fe 3 S 3. So, this is the uh, Fe 3 uh, is sorry Fe 4 S 3 which is combined with instead of another M, uh, Fe 4 S 3 MO Fe 3. 
because you always have a 4 corners other corners are by sulphide. So, therefore, 8 corners always and uh, Fe M O Fe 3 uh, S 3 okay. and these two are there which are uh, connected together to form with the uh, bridge kind of a uh, center there with the 3 sulphide groups will be there. So, therefore, you have uh, M O total together M O F E 7 S 3 S 3 6 plus 3 uh, bridge sulphides. So, that will be S 9 okay. and there is some other species which is probably as a open center. So, this is the uh, molybdenum cofactor. Uh, let me just go back to the previous case uh, where the iron sulfur cluster is involved. The P cluster as I mentioned this P cluster is not a suspended moiety in the protein each of the ion is connected to the cystinyl group. Uh, so, there are 4 cystinyl, 4 cystinyl, 8 cystinyl groups are there. In case of uh, the simple ion uh, protein where the Fe4, S4 cluster is there again it is bounded by the 4 cystinyl. Here it is bounded by 4 plus 4, 8 cystinyl uh, residues. So, uh, so, this is your molybdenum ion uh, cofactor. As I said the one is Fe 4 S 3 component, M O Fe 3 S 3 component and the in between bridging sulphides and this is the kind of thing. And at the molybdenum center you see molybdenum center has got a lot of coordination here 3 and 3 coordinations over there and there is a, a kind of a citrate based a group is also involved. Okay. And so, these are all very important kind of uh, things. So, therefore, each iron molybdenum cofactor is covalently linked to the alpha subunit of the protein by one cysteine uh, residue and one histidine residue in this case. Unlike the iron sulfur clusters or P cluster where all are cysteines. Okay. So, now what is the story? The electron going from uh, the ion sulfur protein which in turn gets from other sources uh, as I will show you more clearly in the next slide to the iron molybdenum protein and from there uh, to the P cluster and from the P cluster to the ion molybdenum cofactor. So, finally, the reaction occurs at the ion molybdenum cofactor where the nitrogen uh, fixation takes place. So, basically 8 electrons first 2 electrons are involved in converting the H 2 plus uh, 2 H plus plus 2 electrons H 2. Okay. So, we have a case where uh, the uh, 8 electrons uh, at the molybdenum center will convert the N 2 to N 2 N H 3 and 2 H plus 2 H 2 and that is what is happening at this particular center. So, now you can see. So, this is called the catalytic unit. So, molybdenum ion cofactor is nothing but a catalytic unit basically in this. Okay. So, so now we have seen uh, ion protein having Mg ATP, Mg ADP binding region as well as the Fe 4 S 4 cluster. Then we have seen uh, the MO Fe uh, protein where there is a P clusters and there is a catalytic FeO, FeMOCO. So, this means we have looked at the most the general features uh, or compositional features of the nitrogenase. Just before we go into more details of the electron transfer, just look at this uh, uh, reactions which are non-specific by the nitrogenase. So, I have already showed the acetylene to ethylene, N2O to N2 etcetera. Uh, earlier, I am just showing again uh, cyanide giving the methane plus ammonia intermediate uh, uh, things can give other kinds of things too. So, you have uh, isothiocyanate kind of thing, uh, carbo carbon dioxide, uh, thiocyanate uh, all these kinds of things can be reduced. These are all non-specific reactions. What does it mean? It means if you take this enzyme into a, a test tube and use any of these uh, use the regular conditions for the enzyme to function and then use any of these as a substrate you get the product. Okay. So, in among all these the hydrogen uh, dihydrogen functions as a competitive inhibitor where the 9 2 will replace that and the carbon monoxide will act as a non competitive means cannot be replaced. And carbon disulfide 
uh, can function as a rapid very rapid equilibrium uh, kind of a inhibitor for the nitrogenase in these things too. Now, so whatever I told earlier about the uh, iron protein and the Fe4S4 cluster Mg ATP or Mg ADP and then P cluster and the F female co is seen here. You can see very nicely this portion is the iron uh, protein, this portion the iron molybdenum protein and this protein has got the 4 and 4 sulfur cluster. It also has Mg ADP, Mg ATP binding site and this particular uh, part of the enzyme has got the P cluster. P cluster is nothing but the fusing of the two Fe4S3 clusters with a bridging sulphide. And then this is the catalytic center and this catalytic center uh, is has got basically iron uh, 7 molybdenum Fe7MO uh, kind of a cluster where MO is the center where the reaction occurs. Now, you can see the electron coming from outside to the Fe4S4 cluster will transfer here by using the Mg ATP the hydrolysis and this goes into the P cluster. P cluster in turn uh, delivers to the FeO, FeMOCO and at the FeMOCO it goes to the molybdenum center and at the molybdenum center it will react with the nitrogen to give ammonia. So, this is the kind of thing. So, uh, this therefore, it is a alpha to beta to gamma to kind of a uh, protein. Uh, in this alpha beta is, uh, is a catalytic part and the gamma is the electron transfer part. Of course, there is electron transfer also present P as P clusters in this one too. So, this is the kind of a thing that we uh, have. So, now we, are, we got all the information required to understand the flow of electron. So, path of electron, how from where, how from to where it goes. Now, this is the iron protein part and this is the molybdenum iron protein part. So, iron protein part couples with the molybdenum iron protein part at the end of the molybdenum in the nitrogen will get bound and then converted. Now, how do the, the iron sulfur protein of the uh, Fe4S4 cluster the iron sulfur protein gets uh, uh, electron? This electron comes from the uh, ferridoxin reduced. So, when the ferridoxin reduced goes to ferridoxin oxidized gives electron and that redox potential is very well suited to add to the iron protein oxidized or Fe4S4 oxidized. So, Fe4S4 oxidized and that uh, goes to the Fe4S4 reduced when uh, the ATP hydrolysis is triggered. So, therefore, this electron transfer triggers the uh, uh, ATP uh, uh, hydrolysis too and that uh, hydrolysis will pump in the electron into the molybdenum iron protein. So, the molybdenum iron protein and this electron can give it to the molybdenum iron protein and reduce and that goes into the oxidized. So, when this reduced protein goes into the oxidized, the electron that is generated will go into the N2. So, like this you have to have one electron again one more cycle 2 electron, one more cycle 3 electron, 4 electron like that you need. So, electron path is from the ferridoxin reduced to the iron sulfur protein oxidized, from iron sulfur protein oxidized to the uh, molybdenum uh, iron protein reduced. Uh, this is nothing uh, uh, but the uh, cofactor and in the cofactor it goes to the molybdenum center and at the molybdenum center it goes to the nitrogen and the nitrogen goes to the ammonia. You already seen on the previous slide how it looks like and this is the molybdenum center, these are the iron sulfur clusters with the triply bridged thiolate and there is one cysteine and one histidine. So, the whole cluster is connected to the protein by two connections, one cysteine and one histidine. Cysteine is coming from this iron, histidine is coming from this particular molybdenum. So, now we have seen that we can see in another way, same information I am showing in a different format, but the message is nothing new. So, this part is your iron sulfur uh, containing iron protein uh, where the electron coming from the ferridoxin and that will activate the Mg ATP hydrolysis and pumps in the electron and this electron goes into the Fe uh, MOCO or molybdenum iron protein at the Fe MOCO and then 
uh, from there it goes to the molybdenum center and then it can go to the nitrogen or hydrogen plus or acetylene etcetera etcetera. So, there is no new information I have explained here except I am showing it some kind of a figure based kind of thing. So, you have the iron sulfur protein over here, iron molybdenum protein here and then uh, iron molybdenum cofactor here and then the reaction of this. Now, this let us try to understand better in terms of the uh, electron transfer. Why? I told you earlier in the previous case I mentioned to you this does not happen in one shot, this happens in a several shots, each electron at one shot. So, one electron it takes in goes through this, goes through this, adds here, second electron goes through this, goes through this, adds here, etcetera, etcetera. Of course, regeneration will also take place. So, that means we have uh, an electron, 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 electron one by one is added. So, let us see how that kind of a thing can be understood. So, that is what I am referring it as the electron transfer mechanism. Electron and this is a hydrolysis that will pump in the electron into this chain uh, the chain of uh, uh, the molybdenum iron protein in that uh, molybdenum iron uh, or iron molybdenum cofactor. So, you can see that the cofactor we are referring in the form of E 1 when one electron is added, E 2 when two electrons one more electron is added, E 3 when one more electron is added, one more electron is added, E 4 one more electron is added, E 5, E 6, E 7, E 8. So, that is how it goes all these things. Okay. So, therefore, you have the uh, in the 9 regenerates back. So, you have an electron flow happening from the iron protein to iron molybdenum protein stepwise by one electron at a time. Once you have completely two electrons are added to the molybdenum center, these two electrons are utilized to convert uh, H 2 H plus ions to H 2 and at this stage the uh, substrate can bind. If it is a nitrogen it is N 2, if it is a ethylene it is C, C 2 H 2. In some other context this was there it is written C 2 H 2, but you can consider this as N 2 also. Okay. So, at this stage your N 2 will come and hydrogen will go. So, somewhere around E 3 case when one more electron comes then nitrogen comes and nitrogen or you can have the C 2 H 2 also. Okay. That so, if it is C 2 H 2 in the initially it will go as C 2 H 4, if it is H plus then it will go as a H 2 and then nitrogen coming. So, the nitrogen coming so 1, 2, 3 electrons are given. So, E 3, E 4, E 5 or N H 3 comes out. So, then E 6, E 7, E 8 one more electron or one more ammonia comes and then it returns back. Okay. So, therefore, you have uh, electron transfer cycle very well. So, this can be checked by adding injecting uh, acetylene uh, the, uh, the, the uh, ethylene coming out all these kinds of things can be done. So, N 2 basically binds at around E 3 state. So, so, E 3, E 4 in between is shown. So, once the third electron is there by the time hydrogen is formed hydrogen is displaced uh, replaced by the N 2. So, so, one by one electron transfer. Now, let us look at uh, in the nitrogenase uh, when such a kind of a one electron, one electron, one by one electron and it is not just one electron, one electron, one electron you have to have also protons that is not shown over here. How the uh, the H 2 is coming out, how the N H 3 is coming out, there have to be two protons by that time, there have to be 2 plus 3 5 protons by the time, 5 plus 3 8 protons by the time. So, that is not shown here. So, only the electron transfer cycle is shown here. So, therefore, the next slide will show you both the electron one by one, proton one by one. So, when you add to N 2 one electron, one proton what happens? When you add second electron, second proton what happens? When you add third electron, third proton what happens? So, this is what we refer it as the different bound states is a mechanism. So, this mechanism is given in two parts, one is the one which is going through the upper part, this is the upper part here and the other one which is going through the lower part. So, up to here is common. So, this lower part is called alternating path and the upper part is called a distal path. So, when it goes to this cycle everything is same. So, only in this region there are two paths are proposed, one is called the distal path, other is called alternating path. 
Now, take the whole enzyme, whole cofactor FEMO cofactor as M. So, all, one can also assume this M is a molybdenum center, either way is all right. Either you can assume M as a molybdenum center or you can take it as a total iron molybdenum cofactor. Now, fine. Now, to this you add nitrogen N2. Now, you add uh, you need to reduce the one electron, one proton, it will give N n becomes N n h and uh, triple bond character will also get affected. Now, you add one more electron and one more proton that can become N h 2. So, that means, both the previous proton and now the later proton are attached to the uh, outer nitrogen not the bound nitrogen that is one path. The other path is first hydrogen let us say is bound to the uh, external uh, nitrogen or distal nitrogen. The second one the hydrogen is bound to the bound metal bound one. So, this is the other path this is the alternating path. Take the first path. So, now you have first step of proton electron second step of proton electron gave uh, M N N H 2. Now, one more electron and proton will certainly add to this one and make N H 3 and this N H 3 can uh, be lost when the next electron proton comes as ammonia that is what is shown as a minus ammonia. And now, what do you have M triple bond N it is called metal nitride. So, nitrido or metal nitride. So, it is a nitrido complex. So, you in the uh, distal path you are going through the nitrido uh, complex and you will not go through the same intermediate when you look at the uh, alternating path and that is what the difference that you miss. So, this nitrido now you add one more electron and proton there is only one nitrogen. So, it will add to that one more electron one more proton will become MnH2 and one more electron one more proton will become MnH3 and then it will regenerate back to M. So, M can be either the metal center or the molybdenum ion cofactor. Okay, you understand that? So, the path 1 is a distal. Why the name distal? The name distal comes because the N 2 the outer N is getting protonated first and in the other case both the nitrogens are getting protonated. So, that is what the difference is. The, so, let us come to the second path alternating path first proton electron M N N H. So, now the second electron second proton will become to the other nitrogen. So, now you have M N H double bond N H. So, uh, so it is a diazine complex of uh, cofactor. So, diazine now you put one more proton electron uh, only one nitrogen will get that put one more electron proton will become N H 2 N H 2. So, this is a metal bound N H 2 N H 2 is nothing but metal bound hydrogen. So, in the previous case it is going via nitride or nitrido in this alternate path it goes via diazine as well as the hydrazine, diazine as well as hydrazine kind of a system. Now, to these you add uh, uh, electrons and protons. So, then you get NH 3 and then that will be broken into the uh, one more electron proton will take out the uh, ammonia and then add to this then it becomes the same. Okay. So, you have essentially uh, in the nitrogenase as I said there are uh, different steps of electrons. Uh, so, the each electron stage we have seen in the previous case we have seen where the hydrogen comes out where the nitrogen gets in here we have looked at the species binding. So, we have looked at the later part of the six electron story in the previous one we seen the total uh, 8 electron uh, story there we have seen total 8 electron story. So, first 2 electrons will be for a hydrogen next 6 electrons for the nitrogen uh, thing. So, in the nitrogen part we have looked at. So, when the nitrogen binds there are 2 possible species one is through the nitrido species or hydrazine. The same thing is shown over here. Uh, so, these are referred in the previous case as uh, E 1 state E 2 state E 3 state etcetera etcetera. So, the same thing is shown here E 1, E 2, E 3. Uh, so, by the time N 2 uh, uh, H 2 will go away. So, E 4, E 5, E 6, E 7, E 8 etcetera etcetera. So, going back and forth. So, these are the kinds of cycle that we have. So, this is uh, uh, something very interesting as far as the uh, nitrogenase is concerned because very complex enzyme. So, we started with the story of nitrogenase which is a reductase enzyme 
we have looked at different complexity of the nitrogenase enzyme iron protein uh, and iron molybdenum protein. In the iron protein you have the iron sulfur cluster in the iron molybdenum protein both the uh, P cluster as well as the molybdenum iron uh, cofactor uh, very nicely and then we looked at the as a catalytic center and the Mg ADP is the one which is triggering the reaction by the hydrolysis of ATP and therefore, these two things conformational change will make that uh, thing to happen. Now, let us switch over to the molybdenum, uh, molybdenum enzymes in the oxidoreductases. I have already told, showed some examples earlier, let us look at before we go into their mechanistic aspects. Example 1 here formate dehydrogenase. So, formate dehydrogenase goes from formic acid to carbon dioxide okay. and uh, this one CO2 etcetera etcetera. Carbon monoxide uh, uh, carbon monoxide oxidoreductase you can call it as. So, carbon monoxide oxidoreductase is, is uh, or oxidase you can say oxo. So, CO plus O going to the CO2. So, this part is for the oxidation purpose. Pyridoxal oxidase. So, this is the pyridoxal moiety then you add this oxidation reaction it will add the OH is called uh, pyridoxic acid. Okay. So, all of these are 2 electron 2 proton kind of things. Now, sulphite oxidase that is SO3 uh, going to SO4 again 2 proton 2 electron and 1 oxygen added biotin sulfoxide reductase. So, reductase means you take out an oxygen from here. So, this is biotin sulfoxide SO, this is the sulfoxide you see this, uh, this is just simple biotin no oxide will be there and this oxygen will go as a water and that will go as a water. You see here in the reaction biotin sulfoxide plus 2 H plus plus 2 electron gives biotin plus H 2 O. So, dimethyl sulfoxide reductase. So, this is a reduction of the dimethyl sulfoxide that is DMSO and becomes DMS dimethyl sulfide. So, that means that oxygen is pulled out by 2 protons and 2 electrons to give water and then dimethyl sulfoxide will go to dimethyl sulfide. It can be from S4O6 uh, to S2O3 also. So, you have a number of uh, uh, the oxidoreductase reactions. And as I have already told you earlier, there are two types of uh, molybdo cofactors are present and one of the cofactor is the one where a molybdenum center with one terrin and the other cofactor is there with the molybdenum center with the two terrins and these two terrins are uh, arranged in a somewhat like a trans orientation. And this particular the one which is containing one is called the sulphite oxidase family some of them some of them are xanthine oxidase family. Difference is in one case you have SCH3 in N S cysteine I am sorry S cysteine in the other case double bond S. So, you have a sulphite oxidase xanthine oxidase. So, it is another family why it is another family because in this family we have one molybdenum center with one terrin. The second family is called the aldehyde reductase family in this case we have uh, two uh, terrines are involved. So, one terrine and two terrines are uh, involved uh, in all these uh, kind of things. So, now in the next class we will fully try to look at how all these oxidoreductase enzyme. So, as I said in the beginning of this particular topic of the molybdenum that when the enzyme in the oxidized state which is molybdenum 6 it will be able to uh, uh, oxidize the substrate when the enzyme is in the reduced state that is molybdenum 4 it can reduce the substrate therefore, it can act both as an oxidoreductase kind of an enzyme and that both of these things are possible uh, there. In the next class I will demonstrate that property what I mentioned oxidoreductase property. Thank you very much.